Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're working on this little button modal. And if you come in here and tab to the first button or you can click as well, you'll see that this little modal pops up that has a link to a YouTube video or to the code that's connected to whatever project you're clicking on. Now, there's a couple of cool things we've done. Number one, you can click off and it will close it down. You can also come in here and hit the escape key that will close it down. If you're tabbing through the page, you'll notice that it goes from project one to project two. But if we actually open up project one, the next tab is no longer project two. It's now that actual YouTube link and then the code. So there are a couple of things we're gonna do here with like tab index and things like that. Now I'm showing you this because I've done something like this on some of the recent videos I've done. And I've got a lot of my projects up here now at codinginpublic.dev uh, slash projects slash whatever the project is. Uh, and now I'm actually loading in here this little uh, modal that will pop up with a YouTube video or the code pen or, or GitHub or whatever so that people can easily trace kind of back and forth between the two. And so I figured I'd just show you how I did that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do this over in code pen and I've got it up here, but we don't have any JavaScript written. That's what we're gonna focus on today. There are probably a couple things you need to notice over here. Number one, I've just got buttons and any buttons I wanna use this on have this data dash button modal true uh, because you know you might have other buttons on your page and so you need some way to identify them and I figured why not make it a custom data attribute. Um, we also have links in here, uh, data dash YouTube and data dash code. We're gonna use those to populate the modal. The modal is below and right now it's hidden and uh, so that's why I've got this aria hidden true on it and a tab index of negative one and then some CSS to hide it as well. Uh, the container, which is gonna take up the full screen, has a modal inside of it that will be positioned at the button wherever we click. And then inside that little modal that pops up, there will be two links and they're each using a icon from Phosphor Icons. I've done a video on free icons in the past. I'll try to remember to add that to the description. Um, let's see, I think in CodePen, yeah, you just add it to the the head up here uh, for the HTML. And uh, so that's what I've done. And then I just have a Google font as well to make it a little better than whatever the default is. Uh, each of these, they do have actual uh, links out here, but we're gonna re be replacing those anyhow. They have ARIA labels, which is important for accessibility to say, hey, view the source code. So they know kind of what they're clicking on uh, since there's no text to identify uh, whatever the thing is that they're clicking on. CSS is mostly unimportant. I'll let you kind of look through that. Um, probably the only thing that would be helpful to know is that we're gonna to toggle everything on and off with this aria hidden uh, attribute. I figured why we're changing that, why should we be adding extra classes to like toggle a, a modal? We're already changing something, let's use that. And so that's what we're gonna use. Uh, also, maybe you noticed over here, if I click, there's like this little arrow that points down. That's just a, I think a, an after element here, yeah. Um, and you can use a little border trick uh, to get this. So you have two transparent borders and then one solid border, and that creates a little triangle in CSS without too much work. I think most of the rest of this is fairly basic, um, or at least is easy to discern. So I'm not gonna, it shouldn't affect our, our JavaScript. So I'm gonna kind of leave that alone. And then let's go ahead and jump over here and start working on the JavaScript. Now there's a few things we, we need to grab before we do anything else. So let's go ahead and add our uh, query selectors up here. And I'm gonna come in here and we want, first of all, the, the all these buttons that have this data, let's see, data dash button modal equals true. So we'll say const modal buttons is equal to uh, document dot query selector all, I'm missing my shortcuts. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna look for anything that has this attribute. And um, let's see what else we might need. We are gonna need the modal itself because we're gonna have to populate that. So let's grab that. So we'll say const button modal container is equal to, I don't wanna type all that again. Let's grab just all that, why not? Um, we don't need all, we only have one modal. So we'll come in here and it's not a, an attribute. It's going to be uh, button modal container. And then let's copy this down. And we also have a button modal. That's the actual little white thing that holds our buttons. And we just called that button modal. Now we've got two other things we should probably grab, which is the link to the YouTube video. And uh, let's call this a button modal YouTube and then button modal code. So the link to the YouTube and the link to the code. And let's see, this was YouTube and this was uh, code. 
I'm not sure why I capitalized one and not the other. And I think these are both um, IDs and not classes. Okay, so we've got everything we need to start working on something. So what do we want to do? Well, first we want to pay attention to what we're clicking on because that's the thing that's going to trigger everything else. So let's write an event listener on these buttons. So we've got this modal buttons uh, node list of all of our buttons on our page. So we'll come in here and say modal buttons dot uh, for each. So we're going to write a little for each loop here for each button. We want to write an event listener. So we'll say button dot add event listener. And we're going to listen for a click. And whenever that happens, we're going to say we want to open the modal. Now I'm passing reference to a function that we haven't written yet. Let's go ahead and come down here and say event listeners. All right, and then we'll write some functions here. So function open modal. Now whenever you pass a reference to a function from an event, you get access to that event, but you have to add it as a parameter up top here. So let's do that, and then we'll say console.log e. All right, and then let's go ahead and open up our console. And if you hit command option J on a Mac, that should open it up here in uh, Chrome. So if I click here, you'll notice I get this whole um, mouse event. What I'm interested in is to come down here, and there's a bunch of stuff in here, obviously, but what we want to know is some positional elements on the page to know where we should position that modal. And so we're going to use these uh, to make sure we position it accurately based off of where we click. Let's pull this down just a bit. Let's get rid of what's new. Right now, I don't care. Okay, <laughs> we'll come over here to uh, function uh, our function of open modal. Now we want to grab several things from this e.target, which is the thing we've clicked on. And rather than listing them out kind of one by one, let's just destructure this. So we'll say const, and then we're going to add several things here. We want the offset left. We want the, not let, but left. We want the client width, which is the width of the button that we've clicked on. And we want the client height. And then uh, we're going to pull all of these from the e.target. Now if I were to come in here and let's go ahead and grab all of these, and now let's say console.log, and then we're gonna log all of those out here. If I save this, and then we click, oh, I know I need to clear this out here. Save this, and then we click. You'll see I get undefined, because this still isn't spelled correctly, <laughs> goodness, uh, left, here we go. Um, now I click, I have to update both of these. All right, you can just turn the video off now um, if you want to. All right, we click. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get pixel values of where it's positioned left on the screen, uh, the button itself, where it starts, how wide it is, and how tall it is. All right, so the next thing we need to do is grab the top position of the button on the screen. And uh, so the way I did that was I said offset uh, top is going to be equal to uh, e.target.get bounding rec get bounding client rect, and then we want the top position there. And if I come in here too, and let's go ahead and grab this, and console.log it, then if I come in here and clear this out, and click on a button here, we're gonna get the offset left, where it's at position left on the screen, the width of the button itself, how tall the button is, and how high up it is, um, where we should position it off the screen, the, the top section of that button. And I guess we're looking at this button, so it's this section is 45.4096, whatever, off the top. So we're gonna use those to position our little modal where we want it to be. So now that we've got everything we need, let's come back over this way. We'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of that. We've got all of our variables we need um, to position that correctly. So we're gonna say button modal, which is the button itself, dot style, dot top, is now equal to, and then in backticks here, we're gonna add, uh, do a little bit of math. So we're gonna say we want the offset top, so where it's at position at the top of the screen, minus the client height, so the button itself, times 1.8 uh, uh, pixels. And you could do times two, but that just raised a little bit too much for my liking. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. And then we don't want just it positioned up and down, we want it in the exact middle of the button. That's why we grabbed the client width. So we can come here and we want the left positioning to be offset, not top, but offset left. And then we want to add to that, so it's left position, whatever the client width is, the width of the button itself. And if we just do that, it'll move it all the way to the right of the button. So we want the client width divided by two. 
So if I come in here now, it should position it directly in the center. Let's just go ahead and say we want the button model container dot set attribute aria hidden, and we want to now set it to uh, false, which should toggle on all of our CSS and everything else. So let me close this down because it's kind of distracting here on CodePen, and I click, and you see now it populates exactly in the middle. And if I were to take away this, just to show you kind of what this is doing, um, and click again, it'll be on the very left. If I add it back in, but don't add the half, it'll move it all the way over the whole width of the button, which will be all the way over here. Um, so let's add that back in. And then if I were to take off this client height, which is the height of the actual button we clicked on, and just say offset top, and click again here, it'll be offset to the exact top of it, and I don't want that. So I want it the top plus one and a half. I could also have taken the height of this uh, container and moved it that way too. Uh, I just figured since I was already grabbing um, the height, the width here, I could just grab the height and just multiply it until I was comfortable. So I came over here and it's just right above, uh, you know, 1.8 times the client height of the button that I clicked on. Okay, so that's what we've got going on. Now we need to actually populate the um, links and everything in those buttons correctly. So we'll say const data YouTube is going to be equal to e.target.dataset.dataset. YouTube. What's that? What that is doing is grabbing our data attribute here of data YouTube, and it's saying, "Hey, I want that variable for that. I want to know what the link is. I should populate things with." So we'll do that, and then we'll come over here and not just grab data YouTube, but also grab data uh, code, and then I'll change this to code as well. And now we need to update the actual links here. So we'll say button uh, modal YouTube, which is that variable we grabbed up top here, is now going to be let's see, I guess, I guess we need dot href is going to be equal to, in backticks here, data YouTube. And we'll do the same thing for the data code. So button modal YouTube, what do we call that? Modal code to. So I'll come in here and code, and this is going to be data of code. So that should populate the links that are in that little modal with the correct links. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and you might remember if we tab to this and hit open, if I tab the next one, it'll actually go to project two. We don't want that. And so what I need to do is actually make sure that all of these buttons here lose their tab index. So they're pulled out of the, the flow of those tab indexes. Let's go ahead and loop through these modal buttons. So we'll say modal buttons dot for each uh, button. We want to say uh, button dot set attribute of tab index. And we want to set that to a negative one to pull it out of the tab flow uh, of tapping through our buttons. So we'll come down here, I'll tab to this first one, open it, and then try to tab, and it should just go to that YouTube. That's cool. All right, so everything should be working on our uh, our open modal function. Now we need to find a way to close the modal as well, and there are a couple things we can uh, use to close it. So let's write an event listener, first of all, to pay attention to any clicks. Now when they click either of these buttons, it should open up that new link, and so this modal can close down. Or if they click here, you know, it's an accidental accidental click, and then hopefully they can just open it back up. So basically, what we could say is anytime they click anywhere at all on the screen, we're going to close the modal. Um, because either they've opened something, and so we can close the modal, because that click will bubble up. Or um, anytime they click off, we'd want to close it as well. So that's easy enough. We can just say our button modal container, and we can add, a, um, add an event listener. So add event listener. And we're going to say click. And whenever they do that, we're going to close the modal. All right, so let's write the function. We'll come up here and say function uh, close modal. And let's see, do we need to take in an event? No, not really, because we're not doing anything with it. All we're going to do is say button modal container dot set attribute. And we're going to set the aria hidden to true. And that will toggle all our CSS correctly. And then we also need to come back here and loop through these modal buttons again, and this time return them back to their original state of tab index zero. So let's come in here and see if this works. So I should be able to click anywhere and it closes it down, and now I should be able to tab again on those buttons, which I can. All right, so we've got mostly everything done, but there's one more thing we could do to make it a little uh, nicer, which would be to add a key up event on the escape key. So let's do that on the windows. We'll say window.add event listener 
listener. And we're going to listen for the key up event. And then we're going to grab uh, the E, the event itself that's generated. And we'll console.log the E. So I'll come in here, open up my console, and I'll click. And then now, as I'm hitting things, you'll notice I'm getting keyboard events. What I'm interested in is the escape key. So if I hit the escape key, you'll see I get the key of escape. So let's use that to uh, figure out kind of whether or not we should close the window. The other thing we want to do is make sure that we don't pay attention to the key up unless the modal is open. So we can say if the button modal container.get attribute of aria hidden, if that's equal to false, so in other words, if the modal is open and the e.key is equal to escape, so we're kind of barring off the only times we're going to use this. The modal has to be open and they have to hit the right key. Then we want to close uh, close the modal. And here we can't pass reference to it. We're inside this little uh, block, but we can go ahead and just call it directly. So now if I come in here and I open this up, I should be able to hit the escape key and it goes away. Well, I know this isn't the most advanced thing I've ever done on this channel. I think there are enough UX things and kind of things that trip me up that I figured I would share with you what I did. Maybe there's a better way to do some of these. If you have an idea, leave it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.